Cool, bro. Let's do it, dude. Okay, cool. So I got Nick Wood here from Flat Fee Mastery. And, you know, I'm excited to have him on, actually. I know my YouTube channel has been a little dead, and I get bombarded with a lot of questions in Facebook group, email, on YouTube, comments, and I can't get back to everyone, but this is going to be a really great session, not just an interview, but also I think that you'll learn a lot, especially what, what Nick is doing right now. It's pretty incredible. So, yeah, Nick, tell us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and how you got into this business. Okay, cool. Well, uh, thanks for having me on, dude. I'm excited to do this. Um, so, yeah, I'm really quick. I'll make it. Qu I'll make it brief. But uh, 2016, I was at the tail end of like doing door to door sales. Honestly, I couldn't think of a worse job to do. So I was literally knocking on doors every single day for four years, um, selling home security systems. And so. In my last year, I was like, I got to get out of this freaking like job. And I was making really good money at the time. I was like, you know, a couple hundred grand and I was young. So I went to lunch with somebody and they're like, hey, you know, do you like the internet? And I was like, I love the idea of the internet because I was looking for a business model. And they're like, well, check out this podcast I did with this guy. And so I went and I checked out this podcast and it was somebody talking about rank and rent. And I was like, dude, that is like, Cause we've all, I'm pretty sure most everyone's read rich dad, poor dad. And I was like, that is like rich dad, poor dad stuff on the internet. Yeah. So long story short, 2016, I hop on a sales call. I thought I was getting information. A couple minutes later, I was given my credit card buying a <laughs> expensive course. And, uh, that was how I got into the space. And for the last six years, um, I've been trying to figure it out and I've had like, you know, I got a couple of deals right there in the beginning. Then I put it on the shelf cause I was too good for the, the business model, which is a whole conversation in itself. Then I came back to it. And anyway, um, at this point now, um, in 2020, we did seven figures doing strictly lead generation. Like that is not SEO. That is nothing in 2021. We did 1.5 million again, lead generation. I'm pointing that out because most people, because now I have a program where I teach people how to sell and how to do this. But um, most of the people that do this, they don't make shit from actually the thing they teach. And I'm like, no, no, I've made millions of dollars doing the actual thing before I ever opened my mouth and said, Hey, let me teach you how to do it. So let me ask you this. So 2020 is when you pretty much like a light bulb went off or yep. something, something happened during that time from 2016 to 2020, where you were able to go up to a million and now even now just growing that. And that's all yep. lead gen. All, all lead gen. I don't do SEO anymore. I have like a yep. side partnership where I send this guy some deals. I make like a couple grand a month that he just like gives me a cut. I do not do SEO. I do not do websites. I only do lead gen. And I only do flat fee lead gen. I don't do any of the paper lead bullshit, the commission deals. Yep. I do flat fee credit card on file with a contract, clean as a whistle type of stuff. And that's working with a local business owner, right? Correct. Not, nothing. Okay. Yep. Amazing. And to, on your point, because you're like, well, what happened in 2020? The difference was, is I got really focused on one thing, which was flat fee deals. And I went into one niche. I was doing one, uh, one uh, uh, monetization, one deal structure, which is flat fee. Um, and I did one sales process, which is what I teach now. And I just got really focused on that one thing. And I think that's what allowed me to scale it up. Amazing. So 2016 to 2020, during that time, wh what were you doing that, that was different? Like, what, what do you feel like was holding you back from so really hitting the numbers? Yeah. So 2016, I dabbled a little bit, got a deal or two, got too cool. And I mentioned this a second ago and, and it sounds funny, but like, I literally, this is the maturity of myself at the time. My thought process was like, well, it's not going to be cool to tell people that I do digital marketing. I'm not kidding. It sounds really lame for me to even admit that, but that was the truth is I was like, it's, it would be way cooler if I said I owned a software company or I did this. So I actually started a software company or tried to because <laughs> I thought it would sound cooler. I'm not kidding, dude. Like that is such a, that's such a, a, a hard thing to admit, but that's the truth. So I yeah. put it on the shelf. So I actually didn't really like go into it um, until 2017 after I failed the business. And at that point I had no money. I had three kids. I had a house payment. I had cars and I had to go into SEO because I needed that quick cash. 
And so re- like I did SEO for eight months before I realized, dude, get back in the lead gen. So really I've been doing lead gen, lead gen since like summer of 2018. And then I, I changed into flat fee in 2020 when I started scaling up. But yeah, so about 2018, it took me that long to like go the SEO route, do the websites. Like I was trying to sell, you know, all these different services. I, it was a mess. So I've been there, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, everyone's shiny object syndrome, right? We're entrepreneurs. Like, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. And I think, you know what I would tell also students too, I would tell them that, and again, it's kind of like the opposite of what you're saying, but I understand what, what you're saying. I would say, listen, because it sounds sexy. Here's the other thing, like rank and rent sounds very sexy or, or digital real estate, right? It sounds sexy when you're right. able to put that title and headline out there on all these different products that are being sold. So these people come in and if they've never done anything on the internet, they're like, oh yeah, I'm just going to rank these sites and make all this money. I'm going to be a digital landlord, right? And yes, it does sound sexy, but I'm very transparent. It's like, yeah, this is a real business. It's a real business model and it's work. So I would always teach them, once you have the skill of local SEO, don't be afraid to also sell that because that's the fastest money that I've personally ever made when I was younger and I got into it. I was just selling all these businesses services. But the other side of the sword is, yeah, it's it's gets hectic. And I'm sure you went through that. And it's you're dealing with clients, you're dealing with different headaches that come up, especially if you're not in one specific niche, which I've done before, you're all over the place. And, and we're going to get into, because I'm going to ask questions about this very soon is the model that you're doing is not just, okay, throw up these sites, because then you have to wait till they, 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 you know, rank, right? It's, it's more of the opposite effect, which we'll get into. But one of the big questions I want to ask you is, do you think rank and rent is dead? Yeah, good question. And I, I do want to mention something just to cl- like with, with what you said about doing SEO and that kind of thing is I did it out of necessity because SEO, like it paid the bills, right? So I don't want to like shit on SEO. Yeah. But the thing is, is like, if you're going to take SEO money, just be smart that you take the profits and reinvest it into digital assets. Yes. That's, I think, is the the, the nuance that needs to be said, because there's nothing wrong with taking money to do stuff that you know how to do. In fact, many of us to get out of our nine to five have to do that. It's just, what do you do with that? Are you putting it into digital assets? Or are you going and, and going to Louie every weekend yeah. and, and getting the latest back? Right. Exactly. So that's it. But is rank and rent dead? Um, well, here's the deal. And I, I like to say this, I'm not here to sell you on it. Um, just, I'll, I'll show you my Stripe account. Like yeah. it, it, it's, it's far from dead. I think, I think everyone wants to, it, the question everyone asks is like, did I miss the window? Right. Yeah. Like, obviously people are still making money. Did I miss the window or is it saturated? Cause everyone's like, well, if you guys are talking about it, like, aren't there going to be too many people doing this? And it's like, guys, <laughs> there's so many niches out there. Like, I've made millions of dollars. I'm in like five niches, like, and I make most of my money in like two or three niches. We have, there's niches we haven't even touched. There's niches that we haven't even tried. And on top of that, most of the people just want to go into like the tier one cities, the Las Vegas, the, the Nashville and all that. Yeah. I make most of my money in freaking rink and dink backwoods, Arkansas, where nobody wants to touch. So like that's to say that it's saturated. It, okay, let's take an example like tree service. If you would have done tree service and gone vertical in 2016, yes, it would have been a lot easier. So tree service, okay, cool. But that's one niche, right? And the other thing is you got to consider just because there's another lead generator in that city doesn't mean you can't make money. I have tons of projects where I found it. I'm like, okay, there's another lead generator. All I'm doing, that's a competitor. It's just like the the, the local tree care guy, Jack, the, the tree care guy. I'm just treating them like a competitor or them like a competitor. And I still, there's multiple businesses that will buy leads from me and somebody else, right? So uh, there's many layers to that. Um, Is it a little bit more difficult in some of these niches than it was six years ago? Of course, duh. But is it, is it saturated? Is it like over? Is it, is, is it dead? Hell no, dude. Like it's just getting started. Like I, I got like today, I got a deal in a niche I've never done. I'll let you guys know. So don't go and do this because I don't know yet. I like to try stuff out before I say, Hey, go into it. But like, I got a referral for a a company that does excavation. Uh, And I'm 
I've done my process, which we're going to talk about in a second. I've got the, the Zoom closed this afternoon at 3 p.m. And that that I've never been. If it's good, I could do 5, 10, 20 sites in that one niche. I've never, I've never done that niche, right? Yeah. So that's, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, no, that that's perfect. And I think another thing is people get so caught up on the niche. And even when you tell them, listen, don't go into roofing in New York City, right? Don't go into these competitive, because they think like, oh, that's, you hear success stories and, and tree service be, became a very popular thing. I, I have a few tree service sites that I've had for, yeah. for years and it definitely is a very popular service now that people are attacking. I think you could still get in do it. And like you said, if you're in the right city, you could still definitely make money in that uh, right. service. But there are so many other niches. If you just start thinking outside the box, I hear people tell me some of the niches or they share with me, hey, can you check this out? And I look, I'm like, I, I never even thought of that, right? Like, it's like, okay, there's probably mo money to be made right there. It's just getting into those obscure things and, and finding the right city and you can hit some home runs. And one last note on that is I remember in the one of the groups I was in, they kept saying, uh, the, 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 what do they say? The riches are in the niches, the riches are in the niches. And I was like, so in my head that I had to find this crazy obscure niche that no one had touched. But guys, the, the money is in the, the, the niches, the riches are in the niches. Yes. But there's also money in the obscure cities. Yeah. And so my game has always been regular niches. So like I make all my money in artificial grass, concrete tree service, spray foam insulation. Like that's it. But I'm in cities you would never even think about. I'm in cities. Like if you're looking at Nashville, I'm not looking at Nashville. I'm looking at, there's a city outside like Lebanon is what it's called. You, you don't even know where that's at, right? But that's yeah. where I make my money. So I think it's either obscure niche or obscure city. And I like obscure city because then I already know the niche is tried and true and it's proven. And then I just have to find the right city. So I think it's one or the other. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Adding a lot of value with that. And uh, I appreciate you sharing your uh, niches as well. But uh, like you said, the niche and, this, and the city, two, two both things that are very important. And another thing is, and again, people could come back to this, not only will they pick a niche that's probably getting saturated or popular, then they pick the big cities, like you said, they will go after Nashville. You know how many times I see it's somethingnashville.com, right? <laughs> so yeah. it's like, they always are doing that. Instead of, and, and again, I don't know, they're getting in their own heads and I'm always trying to just add value and give little nuggets of like, listen, if you follow this process, and again, now we're, we're getting on back to rank and rent. And what I'm talking about is like using organic local SEO to rank these sites, generate leads, and then sell and sell them into, you know, a client. And when I'm saying leverage local SEO, you can leverage local SEO and we, we've had plenty of times where we would sell a client an SEO package and then also turn around after we're doing stuff on their site and sell them leads as well because we knew, okay, we can rank other properties in here, generate them more leads. If they're saying they want, okay, now we got them bathrooms. They send they want kitchens. Okay, if we can get kitchens, now we'll just own that asset. So we're taking the profits and putting it back into assets that we own which is definitely the smartest thing to do. But I kind of want to get into how you guys are doing things because it's not that traditional, hey, now find the city, find the niche. Now you got to build this site and wait for it to rank because we all know sometimes, and I, it's funny, yes, there is cases where you can rank pretty quickly. But when I hear people saying like, you're going to rank overnight or, and that's in their sales pitch, truly, I, I've been doing this a while. I want to see someone, if I pick out a niche, and the city, them rank a site or a GMB overnight. I would be very impressed if they can do that. So I want to get into yeah. a little bit of what you're doing that kind of battles that, because I think yeah. that is one of the biggest bottlenecks with this business model, Rank and Rent. Well, I think everybody that's in Rank and Rent right now, well, not everybody, but I think a lot of us, when we bought our first program, and I, I appreciate you being candid with people and being like, look, this does take work. Like, if it didn't, this would be a scam, right? That it would be literally what, what, like a, a, a Ponzi scheme. Like if it, if it was only upside, like, of course it takes work, duh. Um, so I think a lot of us got into our first program and we had this vision of like, we're going to choose a couple niches, build a couple sites and money's just going to flow in and we're going to travel the world and be digital nomads and, yeah. and, and have like, as Tim Ferriss says, like uh, oil rubbed on our bellies in, in Thailand while we're making money, right? Not the case. So um, that said, like, 
what, what we're doing is a little bit different. And I, I, what I did is I made a mistake in 2018 after I did my SEO thing. And I'm like, look, I got to go get back into Legion. I went into the pay per lead model. And the reason I did that is I was like, well, home advisor does it. So there's got to be something there. By the way, for anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, that's where you give a lead and they pay per lead. And on paper, the paper lead model looks genius, right? Because you're like, oh, there's unlimited upside. There's no ceiling, right? But guess what? There is a ceiling. And people don't talk about this. Business owners always have a mental ceiling. And so what happens is you do a paper lead deal. And let's just do easy math. Let's say you're doing a tree service deal and you're doing 100 bucks a lead. That business owner in their head is going to have a certain amount of money they're comfortable paying. But as soon as you cross that amount of money, they are going to start complaining about the leads. They're going to stop wanting to travel to certain zip codes. They're going to want to raise their minimums. They're going to start all these different things on top of the fact you have to track what is a good lead, what is not a good lead. And so I made this mistake. I got a deal where I was doing pretty well with one client because they were chill. Every time the phone would ring, they would pay me $100. And they understood some of them are going to be crap. And so that worked. Not everyone's like that. So I went and I built like 50 sites in a niche. And the niche is basement waterproofing, by the way. Like I thought I had hit a home run. I'm like, this, I'm just going to go vertical. Really competitive niche, national brands, big SEO budgets, terrible niche to go into and all on paper lead model. And I really dropped the ball there. And so that's why in 2020, I realized I had to get in the flat feed thing. And the reason that I'm even bringing this up is, what I realized in 2020 is I was like, okay, this flat fee thing, there's a lot of good to it. I got the card on file in the winter and my, my income's not going to dip because you know it's cold. Um, but in order for me to scale, I have to build. And if it takes four to six months to rank a website, dude, I got to build like a hundred of these so that in six months I can go sell them. And so I'm like, I can't wait that long. Like I, I can't. And so what we did is we started with this idea. We had this website and it was generating like a couple leads, like one or two leads. And we're like, well, what if we just put on a Google ad and, and like supplemented the, the leads that are coming in with a couple more paid ads and we get the deal before it's fully ranked, even on a flat fee deal. And then as it's ranking, we can just turn the ads off. And so that was kind of like where the whole thing was born. And we've since refined it. And so now just so everybody knows, our process is, I, in the last 18 months, I have not built a single website with my own money. We go out, we put up a one page landing page in a city that we've done the homework on. We run ads to that landing page. We generate a couple of leads. We take those leads to go and close a deal before we ever build out the digital property. And we take the money from the client that he's giving us or she's giving us. And we use that money to build the digital asset. And it allows you to infinitely scale because you're no longer bound by money, right? It's like in real estate, they say OPM, other people's money. You're literally building your digital empire with other people's money. And I know that sounds cliche and it probably sounds spam spammy, scammy, all that stuff, but that's what I've been doing. I have not literally have not built a single site of my own money in the last 18 months um, because why would I if, I, if I don't have to, right? So hope that, hope that, that it's basically taking the model and it's flipping it on its head. And instead of waiting for it to rank, I'm going to get the client first and then I'm going to build out the property instead of building out the property and then getting the client. Amazing, man. And now will you always build a site for that and rank it for every one that you close? Um, so that's the beautiful part is you technically don't have to. So let's say you get a deal and you're charging a thousand bucks a month and the, the ads are only costing you 300 bucks because it's low cost per click. It's not competitive. It's a certain niche. Technically, you could just make the $700 split, right? Thousand dollars minus the 300. And you could arbitrage that thing all the way to the bank and you wouldn't have to. My game is when I got into this business model, I, one of the most attractive parts was the asset. So yes, I always build on the back end, but there is an example. I have an Albuquerque concrete website. And literally, this has happened to me recently. Three months ago, I messaged uh, my project manager and I said, hey, where's our rankings at for Albuquerque Concrete? And she said, what do you mean? I said, what? I didn't stutter. Where's, what's our ranking? She's like, we don't have a site. I'm like, what do you mean we don't have a site? We've been getting paid for a year. She's like, yeah, we don't have a site. And dude, we forgot to build the site. We, we were doing so many deals. Like we were in these sprint mode and we, we've been charging this guy a thousand bucks. 
We, by the way, we've been sending him leads from the one pager, but we didn't ever take the profits and build out the website. And I've been making 700 bucks or I think that deal is actually like I'm spending uh, a thousand, I'm charging a thousand and spending like 500, but we've been making 500 bucks a month for a year and yeah, we don't even still have a, a win. So still a win. Still a win. It's still a win. Now we went, the website is there. We went and built it. I was like, oh crap. But um, for those of you that want to go fast and just need some cash, you can just go stack 10 of those deals you know, get your income up and then just go build the properties out if you really, really need cash. I have another uh, question for you because I know this is big and I was just thinking about all the messages I get. So are you guys also attaching a Google business or just do doing pretty much organic website rankings? Yeah. So that's the, that's the most gangster part about this whole process is when I first got into this, right, you build the website and then it's like, okay, and, and in the training, they always kind of like do the shit sandwich where they're like, okay, there's some bad stuff that you have to do this. And then there's the money. And then you, oh, and you got to do the GMB and you got to go to Craigslist and you got to go to Airbnb yeah. and all these different things. <laughs> so dude, I had somebody full-time, all they were doing was Google my business. Like I was paying somebody a salary to do Google my business. Then one day in 2020, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm pre-selling all these sites. I have somebody that lives in the city so why don't I just make it a requirement that that person has to give me an address? So now what we do is after we close the deal, we, I, this is my line. I always say, oh, by the way, I'm literally putting in the credit card in Stripe. I'm like, oh, there's a catch, by the way. And they're always like, oh, here it comes. And I'm like, no, I'm totally kidding. I'm like, hey, remember that map section I showed you? Yeah, I want to get you in there. And I said, I need you to give me an address because Google's going to send you one of these. And what it's going to allow us to do is give us the chance to get in the maps. Now, by the way, this isn't going to change the price. That's just going to be more leads for you. I need an address. And the only thing is it can't be the same one you're using for your business. So it can be a client. It can be a customer. It could be a sister. I just need an address. What do you got? And it's part of the deal. 100% of my websites have GMBs because I'm using them. And then what I do is I have them set it up. They set up the Gmail. They set up the whole thing so that the IP address is in that city. And I have a hundred percent of my properties have GMBs attached. So to answer your question, 1000%, we have GMB attached, yeah, but yeah. I don't have to deal with that bullshit anymore. Yeah, that's great. Great, uh, great way to hack that. And all the people, by the way, all the people out there that have full, full businesses where they sell GMB, I'm sorry, because uh, like, I'm going to put those businesses out of business because you, you don't need them. Just tell the site up front and make the business owner give you the address. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. That's a great, uh, hack, like I said. And the reason why I was asking that is because obviously a lot of people have a trouble getting a GMB, number one. And to me, I think the Google My Business map section generates so many damn calls. If you get in there, you're getting calls, you're getting leads. So once you take the, the money and you're able to flip that from spending ads and then reinvesting it into an asset and getting the GMB ranking, I'm sure you're able to couple that, either leave the ads running or maybe sometimes even stop ads and just let organic uh, leads come in. That, that's the game. Long-term, you want to turn the ads off. And I'll say on the flip side for the people that are like, oh my gosh, if I don't get the GMB, I can't get a deal. Guys, I have, I do have a few sites that I sold the, the, the traditional way where we ranked it. And then we did the thing and those don't have GMBs attached to them or they didn't until we got the client and we still were generating leads. So you can still get deals without the GMB, but I, if you have a client, just make it a requirement. Like, dude, it's more, it's more business, but I, I agree with you. There's a lot of calls depending on the niche. I think there's a ton of calls that come in from the, yeah, I think it's, it's getting more popular too with the GMBs because it's the reviews too. Like we had, we have a site Lubbock roofing contractor. So we were, we were, we're number one organically with the website. And then a few months ago, and I was using that like in a case study and showing like students things and they're like, Hey James, and I, I don't like check, I don't check on them all the time. They're like, I see that your maps is like not there. So I went and I looked and it, it's pretty public. So I'm like, someone probably either spammed it or complained about it, you know, cause that, that, you know, people have nothing better to do than, than that. So I noticed that we dropped, but then I, what I also noticed is like, we went from 15 or 20 reviews down to one. And that's when they started like looking into where you're getting your re reviews from. Right. So when that uh, did come out though, can you still hear me? I just got like, a, yeah, I can tell you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. When that did come off though, forget it. Like our calls, we were only, and even that, that was not, again, I don't tell people going to roofing. We went in, I was pretty confident that we can 
uh, rank it. It did require much more resources. So I put some money into that. I ended up making a deal with someone. I think we rented it out for five or six months. Good thing I got money out of it, but that thing took a hit and we hardly really get calls from that, right? But that's not every niche in every city. It's a decent sized city, obviously in Texas and it's in roofing. And I use that as an example because this crap happens, right? Uh, like it, it's it's a real business. It's a real business model. There are ups and downs. And when you're just relying on one thing, that's why I kind of love the the ad background that you have as well. Because like for us, we could have just turned ads maybe back on and started generating those those leads again. Uh, now roofing, I know the ads are not very cheap, so that's one. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other thing too is like if you sell every deal. What, like every time I sell a deal, I bake in the cost of ads. I'm like, okay, it's going to be X amount per for ads, right? So here's the cool part is let's say that there's a Google update. I don't know what animal Google's on. They did the panda and the penguin and the whatever. I don't know what one they're going to be on next, but whenever they do that one, let's say it hits all of us, right? I'm good because I are, I know I'm profitable. If all my rankings go away, I just turn back ads. I know because I don't sell a deal unless I'm 30 to 40% profit margin with the ads. So doing the ads and selling it with the ads baked in is actually a way to like future proof yourself to know that even if everything goes south, you're still profitable. You're still making money because I, I know I can turn on ads and get leads, even if my rankings went away. Does that make sense? Yeah. Amazing. So Amazing. anyway. And to be honest with you, I've been doing this for a while. We did, and it's it's funny, when I saw what you were doing, we were selling leads, paper call, like my, my partner that ran all the paper click stuff, he was in charge of that. I never got involved in running ads or doing anything like that. I always was in charge of just making sure our organic rankings and all those assets were being built and then making sure if we have clients, like that stuff's getting done. And we sold a lot of calls, uh, more of like the paper call model though. So it was per lead. And I mean, we had some great ups and downs uh, even with that, but it's, it's amazing how you kind of married the two together and created that pre-selling kind of uh, model where, hey, we're going to be able to right away, be able to collect some money, dump it back into these assets and protect ourselves long haul and actually scale you know, I'm sure there's going to be a time where you're going to have to hire some helpers if you really want to get to the seven figure mark, right? You're, like, you're not going to probably do that all on your own with all those moving parts. Yeah. And one thing too, that I think is really cool is when you do, when you pre-sell the way that I, that I do it, which is I always give leads up front. I give them three to five leads and I have an exact process, how many leads, how much time, pat, like all this different stuff. Right. But I think a lot of people in their heads are like, well, yeah, that works for you, Nick, but I, I don't have sales experience or it works for you, Nick, but English isn't my first language. Like all these, yeah, buts, right? Yeah. But what's been cool is I have right now at the time of recording this, I've been teaching this for like six months. I have 210 students and we have over 85 people who have already gotten deals and I've got white people. I've got black people, I've got Hispanic people, I've got Asian people, I've got people that are single moms, I've got people that are single dads. I have a guy in Australia that has a stutter and 97% of the people do not have sales experience. What's cool is when you send the leads up front with a specific process, it does the selling for you. You don't have to be a masterful salesperson like I had to be knocking doors selling home security systems. The leads do the selling for you because they're like, Oh, that's pretty cool. And Oh, I'm already paying home advisor. And those are leads that are going to everybody. These are exclusive leads. So that's one thing that I think is really cool is even without sales experience, if you do the model where you send the leads up front, that does the heavy lifting and you don't need to be this expert salesperson. And I literally like have people that English is their second or third language and they're crushing it. That's amazing. Yeah, we do the same thing. We give leads up front and we have a certain process like that as well, where, hey, listen, we're giving you the a couple of these leads. We let them know, obviously, we're, we're serious, though. And then we follow back up with them and we either close a deal or again, again, there's, there's a process in it. It is work. I like to tell people that. But if you're learning from people who are doing this and I know. Uh, Nick, not only are you doing this, I know you have some pretty successful students and people in your group because I checked out the group. You got some incredible things uh, going on over there. So I know we're going to, I think, hit like 30 minutes. I don't want to 
make this one video too long. I like to keep yep. my videos usually around 20 minutes. So 30 minutes is good, but cool. I appreciate you coming on and dropping some knowledge bombs, but also where can people find you? And is it okay that they go check out your, your group as well? Yeah. So um, my YouTube channel, I drop a video every day, just kind of like a little nugget. Um, I drop some shorts every day and then we're trying to do some longer form stuff as well. But if you guys want to like get a peek into the process that, that like I've been doing for two and a half years, um, you can go to my Facebook group, but the easiest way is I've linked it up to a website. So it's, uh, art dash of dash preselling.com. That'll take and you to the Facebook group. Give me the links too. And I'll put them all the links. Will yeah, be I will. In the description. I will. And uh, we don't, by the way, it's a little bit different than most groups. Like we don't approve everyone. If your profile looks spammy, if you look like you're just going to sell some shit, I, I'll just <laughs> deny you. Like, I don't care about the number. I want people in there that are going to make money because that's what helps me grow. So the group is dope though. Like I, my goal in there is that the free stuff I give away is better than most people's paid stuff. And uh, yeah, we have, I mean, do I have, I have a, a student that's just did 45. He's at 45 K right now. He was at 44, $4,000 a month in uh, December. And he's at 45, 45, dude. I did an interview with him. Last night. You check. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's so, incredible. Yeah, man. But I think, I think the biggest takeaway, like I, I hate when I listen to calls like this and there's like no action items. I think the biggest takeaway guys is like, go pick a niche. And if you're like stuck on the niche, go do this one. Probably my favorite niche right now is concrete. Okay. Go pick a niche, concrete, spray foam, whatever. Go pick a city that is moderate competition and look at the cost per click of like how much it's actually going to cost and make sure it's not more than $5 and like go and go and find somebody who's already paying for Google ads, paying for home advisor generate some leads, build a simple landing page, run some ads to that landing page, generate some leads, go send them some leads and go try this out. Like it works. People, people are very receptive when you give value first, instead of coming with an open hand. Definitely. Definitely. And again, not only will I leave the links to go and check out Nick down below, but I'll, I'll add other of my video resources that I have where, you know, I've made videos where I'm cold calling and those because like you said, I like to just make sure like people are getting something from, from it. And when I'm in this rank and rent world of local SEO, there's only so many videos, right. That you can make sh like showing, okay, this is what we're doing here. This is what we're doing there. Uh, again, a little bit different than what you're doing though. So definitely, I think that if people, again, if they get approved into your group, they'll see the value ladder there of what you're actually doing. Cause again, I would not, and here's the thing, a lot of people know this. I think you're probably the first guest I had on that's even in this realm of things, right? That we that we kind of both are in. And I, I don't think I've ever had anyone else on. And I would not have someone come on this channel because believe me, there's been people that messaged me and reached out to me if I did not believe in what you were doing was valuable. I appreciate so, that, man. So definitely. And I'm sure we'll jump on again. We'll schedule something out on maybe a topic. Again, people too, whatever feedback we get from this, it allows me to come up with ideas of like, okay, maybe next time we could talk about this. So any questions, comments, put them down below. And I could have Nick come back on and we'll go and cover that type of stuff. Love it, dude. Well, thanks for having me on brother. It's been really good. I appreciate it, man.